uh, indeed an honor to be here with you all today uh, at this defining moment in history. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Governor Northam for his courageous leadership uh, at a time when our country needs to be brought together and also be brought forward uh, out of a dark past. Uh, I think it speaks volumes uh, that you would stand up right now uh, with one voice and with clarity uh, to say that we need to be very different as a commonwealth and as a country than what we have been. Uh, in 2020, this is the first year of the next 400 years in Virginia and in America. And we now get to determine who we are going to be as a people, as a commonwealth, and as a country. Whether or not we will be shackled by our history, whether or not we will continue to exclude people, to treat them unequally, uh, to take people outside of the scope of the promise of this nation and its founding documents. And today in Virginia, uh, I believe we are making a down payment on a new promise to the people of Virginia and of America. Because as the governor mentioned, uh, we have many more Confederate monuments than just the statues that exist here in the city of Richmond and around the Commonwealth of Virginia. Those Confederate monuments include substandard schools the kids are going to that are dilapidated, that are shrines to an ideology of inferiority of black and brown children. Those Confederate monuments include a broken healthcare system uh, where African Americans and minorities uh, have worse health, health outcomes. Those Confederate monuments uh, include substandard housing and eviction rates uh, that are incredibly high, destabilizing families and communities. They include a broken criminal justice system where African Americans are overrepresented by three and three and a half times in our prison population. And so today, uh, as we make that down payment, it's with the recognition uh, that Governor Northam uh, eloquently stated uh, that there is so much more work to be done. Uh, and I'm grateful to all the uh, tremendous leaders who have come out uh, here today, uh, who have stood up with moral courage, uh, who have been uh, voices for so many years for change. Uh, and today that change uh, is upon us because of the work uh, that so many have done. Uh, I see Pastor Wesley in, in his prophetic voice, and I want to thank him for his extraordinary leadership over many years and calling us to the better angels of our nature. Uh, I want to thank my friend, Reverend Robert W. Lee IV, uh, who joined me last year uh, in protesting the honoring of Robert E. Lee and Stonewall Jackson and the Senate of Virginia. Uh, and I'm proud that with the governor's leadership and our General Assembly working together, uh, we have eliminated Lee Jackson Day here in the Commonwealth of Virginia for the first time in 131 years uh, because of that leadership. So thank you, Governor. Uh, and we no longer in the Senate of Virginia honor uh, Robert E. Lee or Stonewall Jackson in adjourn in their memory. But this is the culmination of the work of so many people over so long a period of time. And last year in Virginia, in 2019, we commemorated 400 years since the first meeting of the General Assembly of Virginia in Jamestown in 1619. Uh, but we also commemorated 400 years since the first enslaved Africans were forced to land right here in Virginia, Fort Monroe, Hampton, Point Comfort. And those have been the dual strands of darkness and light that have run through the veins of the Commonwealth of Virginia and through our nation for four centuries. And you can draw a direct line uh, from that 400 year mark through slavery and segregation and the black codes and discrimination and massive resistance and the death of George Floyd on a curb in Minneapolis and the death of Breonna Taylor sleeping in her home uh, and the death of Ahmed Arbery who was killed and hunted down like prey on the streets of Georgia. You can draw a direct line from that point to everything that we're experiencing today but the good news is that we can be different in this first year of the next 400 years. We can take this country and our commonwealth on a different course. And I think that's what today is all about. Uh, and so this is something that impacts every single one of us, regardless of your color, creed, faith, nationality, or origin. Uh, we're witnessing a moment in history where we all get to change, to rise, to build people and communities up and not tear people and communities down. Uh, and so uh, tomorrow, uh, this is also very personal for me and my family, uh, tomorrow will mark 222 years to the day that my great-great-great-grandfather, Simon Fairfax, was freed from slavery on June the 5th, 1798, in Fairfax County, Virginia, freed by the ninth Lord Fairfax. And so this is something that impacts every single one of us, uh, but I am proud 
uh, that my nine-year-old daughter and 10-year-old son uh, will not have to grow up in a Virginia and in a world that does not value them, that their lives will be put on a pedestal, that their lives will matter, and that the lives of every black and brown person in Virginia and in America will matter and will have hope and will have opportunity for change. So thank you, Virginia, for standing up uh, at this moment in history. Thank you, Governor, for your tremendous leadership. Uh, and America has its best days ahead of us because of what we are doing right now. So God bless you all, and thank you very much.